One of the first things most jazz guitar players learn is obviously the the plain two five one like this. So D minor seven, G seven, C major seven. But in reality, all those chords can get subbed out and, and made more interesting by use of inversions and different extensions. And in today's lesson, we're going to look at eight alterations you can make to the five chord for more interesting movement back to the one chord, which gives you loads more potential for voice leading, which is where you get notes which move between the chords very closely. Something like this. that sound on the top. Just a nice movement. We're going to do all the examples in a 2-5-1 in F, so that is G minor 7, C7, F major. F major 7 I'm using there. This plain old way of playing it, it's just a start and there's so many different ways we could voice these chords for more interesting movements between them. And we're going to start today with the 5 chord. Now the 5 chord, so you know the dominant 7th chord, is where a lot of different possibilities can happen. A lot of different extensions can get added and we're going to look at what we call altered dominance and we're going to look at eight different possibilities to spice up your 251 rhythm guitar playing. Leave me a comment if, like me, you're guilty of spending much more time practicing lead guitar than rhythm guitar. I think that's pretty common for, for most guitar players. So without further ado, let's get on to these eight possible subs for the five chord and I'll put the shapes on the screen. Now to understand all of this, rather than just playing it just from shapes with no knowledge of what's going on, you need to understand about the construction of the chord and what kind of the term altered means. So a dominant chord is constructed of a root, a major third, a perfect fifth, and a flattened seventh. So when we get alt chords, alter chords, it's when the fifth or the ninth gets amended and it gets either lowered at a semitone or raised by a semitone. So if we take a C7 chord, so C, E, G, B flat, G is the fifth, so that can either be made a flat five by going down a semitone from G to G flat, or it could be raised a semitone up to A flat to make it a sharp five. Similarly, the ninth, so if we had a, a, a C9 like this, you know that chord, the ninth, which is a D, it could be flattened to D flat for a flat nine, or it could be raised a semitone for a sharp nine. So those are the sort of sounds we're gonna deal with. Alterations to the fifth and the ninth. Just before we do it, let's just take our basic progression. So G minor seven, C seven, F major seven, and make sure you can play that first. A PDF of tab and notation with the chord shapes is available on my website for free download. Uh, check the pinned comment or the description for that. Now let's get on to the two alterations of the ninth, both the flat nine and the sharp nine. Now you'll notice in these shapes that we don't have the fifth present, this is pretty common uh, when trying to play these sort of chords on the guitar. So with C7 flat nine, our progression becomes G minor seven C seven flat nine, which is a D flat. So the as I said earlier, the flat, the ninth is normally a D. That's the natural ninth. Lower it a semitone for a flat nine. D flat or C sharp. And with this on that B string, we get that that movement. So the D on the top, then the D flat on the top, then the C on the top. Really beautiful. If we do it up here. Second one, let's raise the ninth. So let's have a sharp nine. So this chord, a la the Hendrix chord. So this is an interesting chord because it contains E and E flat, a major third and a minor third. Although we're really thinking of the minor third as a um, sharp nine. So listen to that tense chord. So let's go G minus seven, C seven sharp nine. Then I'm gonna go up. F minor 7 slash A, so because this time I got D on the top still, then E flat on the top, the sharp line, then E on the top, so you get instead, so instead of which was this time we get. moving quite away from where we started just with the plain old 251. So those are both of the alterations for the ninth that we can get on a dominant chord, either the flat nine or the sharp nine. So moving on to the alterations of the fifth, 
So we're going to go with a flat five or a sharp five. So the fifth of C is G. So the flat five is G flat and the sharp five is A flat. You can get this flat five chord like this. This is the easiest way to voice this on the guitar. There are many other ways you can voice these chords, obviously, but I like this one. And for all of these altered chords, I like to have the altered note on the top so it really stands out. So it's like that. So this is going C, B flat, G, E, sorry, and then the G flat. So that's the flat five. So that could give us, just with using some sort of basic shapes, G minor 7, C7 flat 5, F major 7, like that. Uh, we could find nice inversions of the other chords, like or G minor 7 slash D, so that's with the 5th in the bass, then the C7, flat 5, then to this, F major 7 slash A, that's very jazzy. from reposition, haven't we, um, without the alterations, but you can just do it with simple chords if you like, it's probably the best place to start if we get involved in all those inversions. So that's the, the flat 5. The sharp 5 has a, a massive pull back to the 1 chord. I mean, if I leave that there, there's C7 sharp 5, C, B flat, E, sharp 5 there on the top, which is an A flat or a G sharp. Because it's a semitone, that, that sharp 5 beneath A, which is the major third of our, our uh, one chord. So we've now got G minor 7, C7 sharp 5, up to F major 7. Nice here, because you get... So I'm always looking for these things on the top string, because they stand out nicely. So it's going B flat, a chromatic enclosure of, of A. B flat on the G minor 7, A flat on the C7 sharp 5, up to A for that. Through inversions, there would be other ways for nice whistling we could go. So we could have, that's uh, G minor 7 slash F, so that's got the 7th in the bass. C7 sharp 5, into F major 7, or yeah, that's nice. If we make the last chord, instead of F major 7, F major 9, we could go. Which is quite nice, because then you get descending lines you get B flat on the top, C7 sharp 5, F major 9, so you, that's nice. So what if we get G minor 9, C7 sharp 5, F major 9, that way you get A, A flat, G. Those are obviously sort of more tasty ways to do it, but just get used to playing way first. Vanilla way. If we want to get even more tense, we can make alterations to both so we can have the fifth and the ninth stuff happen to them both. So let's go with sharp five, sharp nine. So this chord, this is the shape you need. So this is, there's our root, third, seventh, then we've got sharp nine, sharp five. Uh, this is the best shape for me. You can do it in other places, but uh, I really like this one. So G minus seven. C7 sharp 9 sharp 5 F major And on the top here we get that sound of I could go to normal F major 7 What if we flatten the 9th and flatten the 5th and we get this chord which is root, third, flat seven, flat nine, flat five. We get this then, G minus seven, C seven, flat five, flat nine, F major seven. Two left to go and here's the first one, C seven, flat nine, sharp nine. I don't particularly like this one if I'm honest, but just for completeness of information, here we go. G minus seven. Final one, we're gonna have, I really like this one, we're gonna have our sharp five and the flat nine. Great shape for it as well. So we can have G minus seven, C seven sharp five flat nine. If I was 
looking for shapes with notes on the top, I could have up here, D is the fifth of G, there's our flat nine, there's the fifth of F, so I could use this. I don't normally like to use big chord voicings where I play five or even six strings there you could do. Um, but with this sort of voice leading and all these alterations, sometimes it, it can work really nicely, particularly sort of sustained chords. So on to practice. So these alterations are there for you to add a little bit more interest when the five chord comes along, particularly if you want some tension. Now, things are important if you're playing with other people, um, you know, you've, you've got to be careful that it doesn't clash with what someone else is doing. If you're playing particularly flat and fifths, that could really clash with what a bass player is doing, for instance. Um, it's it, because they'll see often using just the triad, um, and they'll be thinking of the regular fifth. So if you're playing C7 flat five and they're playing the fifth, it, it might sound interesting, but um, something to think about. The other thing is that it doesn't clash with the melody too much. If you're putting in C7 sharp five flat nine D flat, and the melody note is a a D at that point in the song, that's that's going to sound awful. Uh, so you have to use your ear as to whether it fits with what uh, the melody of the song is. The other thing, place to use this is if you've got the real book and when you're looking through it, sometimes it will say, sometimes it will say like C7 flat 9, but other times it will just say C7 alt. And in those instances, you can use an alteration of your choice from the ones that I've shown today. And the ones where both are altered, the fifth and the ninth, can be a bit intense, so maybe just get used to the uh, the ones with either the, the fifth altered or the ninth altered on their own to begin with. Don't forget you can grab a uh, PDF of the tab and notation and chord shapes over at my website, link in the description beneath, and I'll leave it in the comment pinned. If you've gained value out of today's lesson and you'd like to support me, then there's the option to leave a small donation to help cover costs. Um, any donations greatly appreciated. And that brings me on to say that uh, if the 251 is something you need to get to grips with a little bit more, then I've made a few lessons on that topic. And I'll put two videos on the screen for you to take a look at, you know, basic ways of playing over the 251 and um, ways to go outside on the 251 and so forth. Thanks for tuning in today. Any questions or comments, leave them below and I'll see you next time.